thank you so much for staying with us. We continue talking football and the East Zone final in Trinidad and Tobago's SSFL Intercall Championship. San Juan North Secondary and Trinity College East battling at the Larry Gomez Stadium. Trinity College East winning that game 1-0. Well, there's also action from the Isida Costa Cup in Jamaica. Nine-time champions Clarendon College taking on the Manning School in the first semi-final at Stets in Santa Cruz. Clarendon College advanced to the final 5-4 on penalties after a one-all full-time scoreline. Well, Manchester High and Central are facing off in the second semi-final. Central, they lead 1-0. Meanwhile, the finalists for Jamaica's Issa Manning Cup were decided on Tuesday evening following the semi-finals at the National Stadium in Kingston. In the first semi-final, 30-time champions Jamaica College produced a come-from-behind 2-1 win over Craig Butler's Mona, while St. Andrew Technical surprised defending champions Kingston College in semi-final 2. Sportsmax had live coverage of both encounters. Donald Oliver, he led commentary for the first semi-final. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here, and uh, that was a, a really clumsy challenge. And Gordon was taken down there by Rascal Rose, and the penalty was converted by Don Hugh Mitchell, getting his 20th this season. And Mona, they were ahead in the sixth minute of play. JC kept on coming, they had chances. This one saw Bernard making an absolutely magnificent save, denying Kevon Wilson. And then, well, that wasn't the best handling at all by Rassica Rose. Ziminis on the left got a shot off was handled well by Hakeem Bernard. Wasn't a lot of power in that one. But then Ziminis with a similar opportunity as he broke free from the ball from Kevon Wilson. And then what a finish that was to the right of Hakeem Bernard. Fantastic stuff. And that was equalizer for JC. Could have gone further ahead. Zimni should have gotten a second here, but couldn't get by the keeper. In the second half, more opportunities. Lynch was cut down by Mitchell, and the penalty was awarded to Jamaica College. For all the marbles, Wilson converted in the 58th minute to give Jamaica College the critical lead, silencing the crowd in the process. Mona didn't have a whole lot of opportunities going forward, but that was a fabulous save. Wonderful shot coming in from Kishane Gordon. And an opportunity here, headed just wide of the mark. And again, that was close. Then McQuan Aldridge. I think it was a missed kick initially, no? Then tried to go around the keeper. And then looking again for the equalizer, Robinho Gordon, heading it over his own bar. Dylan John with space, trying to go alone. Had Alec Benny for company, and uh, his shot was deflected wide. And that was that, as far as the 90 minutes were concerned, with JC coming out on top. Let's hear from both coaches now, Davian Ferguson of Jamaica College and Mona's Greg Butler. Very slowly, um, nerves at the start, but I think once we settle down, we know we had the measure of this Mona team. Um, they are a team that are very emotional, very direct, and they live on the edge. So once we could have maintained our composure, keep our concentration going, we know we would have won this, um, this game. Because this is not the first time Jamaica College is in this position. And Pedigree Grand Class came out today here on show. Um, I think that we, we, we did our best. You know, fo the football is round. Um, more powers to JC. Congratulations to them, they won. Um, I'm proud of the boys. Brilliant boys, working hard. Small, small squad. Putting everything, fitness, everything. And it says a lot for development and building your own. Yeah, and that's one thing I'm proud of with my team. 
Those boys have been with me for three, four years now. Very proud of every single one of them. Ricardo Chambers was our commentator for the second semi-final between Casey and Stets. Here are those highlights. What a match this has been. Kingston College came in as favourites. Tishon Mattis with the first strike towards goal might not have been on target. But Jaheim Williams in the stats goal was taking no chances. Looked across, picking out Leon Brown. Stats at the other end. Brown unable to get the header towards goal. Then in the ninth minute though. Shaquan Sexwell with a wonderful strike. Precision and power. And Tajari Lee in the Kingston College goal had no chance. Stats one nil off. And what a way it was. 25th minute, they would get their second goal. And they would get it from an unlikely source. Their number 14, Rashawn Frankson, his first goal of the season. And what a goal it was. A beautiful right-footed curler around to Jean Reilly. That made it 2-0. Kingston College kept fighting though. And Dejon Richards sprinting inside the box. Shrugging off the defender and getting the cross in. Port home by Nasharna Gibbs gave the goalkeeper a chance on the recovery. But the booty got to it, wasn't strong enough. Brown got inside the box. Leon Brown dropped his shoulders, got away from Bayern. But the shot was into the side netting. That's the way they ended the first half. Second half, Richards with a left footed strike, producing a save from Jackie Williams. Again, and it was Mattis who pretty much got a vote on it and stopped it from going in. This cross coming in from Shakon Satchwell, then laid off to Dwayne Atkinson, and Atkinson with a right footed shot. Goalkeeper Tajat Rili getting a hand to it, but it wasn't strong enough. He would be disappointed that he didn't manage to keep that on, but that gave San Andrew Technical a 3 1 advantage. And then in added time, Sean Richards looked as if he might not come back on for the second half after being taken off injured in the dying moments of the first half. But he did return and he got his first goal of the match, his 25th of the season, to go with the assist earlier. He gave Kingston College a chance in the closing moments, but they couldn't capitalize. San Andrew Technical left to celebrate. Let's hear from both coaches, Philip Williams of Stats and Raymond Watson for Kingston College. We, we came back, we really put up a good fight and uh, uh, my emotions was, I didn't like uh, how the, the, the tackling was flying in on Dujan Richards. So that was basically that. I, I, I thought the players were trying to deliberately hurt the youngster. But all in all, um, we just move on and congratulations to St. the Technical and well for Kingston College. This same final felt like a final to me. I mean, the guys went out there. We know that to beat this um, KC team, we have to outscore them. And that is what we did today. We're now joined in studio by Leger Williams, who was the analyst for both semifinals last night. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So I'll start by asking you about that JC win when they overcame Mona. We were in studio, you know, getting ready for the zone and it was buzzing with excitement. What did you make for that JC win? Um, I think it was a very good win. I think they played really well. Um, as their coach mentioned, they are the better team in certain instances. They just had to overcome the chaos that Mona creates. And they did that. They eventually kept their composure. They created more chances. They eventually took two of them and got the result. As an analyst on matches like these, I mean, you're a Jamaican, you're analyzing these Jamaican matches, a lot of passion inside of you where these games are concerned. How are you able to keep your composure when you're looking at those quality of goals, top-notch goals? Well, um, it's not a matter of keeping composure. I mean, I didn't attend any of these schools. So, so there's no passion? Yeah, No, there's passion because <laughs> you know, I love football, but there's no specific ties. So, you know, I'll, I'll keep my composure to an extent, but... I'll be excited and I'll let that excitement come out while I'm speaking afterwards. Mm. So Lance, just one thing, it'd be different if Campion was playing? No, definitely. Definitely would be different. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you, you just said they overcame the chaos that Mona creates. Can you talk to us about that? Well, what do you um, mean by that? Mona, they play very similar systems tactically. But the style of play is, what, is what's different. JC tried to possess the ball and try and keep it for long periods to try and overcome teams that way, tire them out. Mona play extremely direct. 
And when they play direct, it going, it's always going to create chaos because, you know, it's so many players flooding forward, fighting for one ball. So that's always going to create chaos, and that's where a lot of their goals come from if you look throughout the season, you know, just balls in the box and just ending up in the back of the net. And they are very good players not to take away from that, obviously, but, yeah, that's just how they operate. Yeah, um, I heard Ferguson, the JC coach, also saying that the Mona players play on the edge. Mm -hmm. You know, is there something about the Mona players that is exhibited by the personality of their coach. Yeah, because definitely. Because when he says that, I link the two things. Yeah, definitely. They, they're very aggressive, very intense in how they want to play. They're very deliberate. So when they're going forward, when they're defending, when they're going forward, they always want to get forward quickly, do things quickly, all of their actions quick, immediate. When they're defending, it's the same thing, counter-pressing, pressing. They want to squeeze the opposition as high as possible. So yeah, it's definitely deliberate and it links together well yeah when you were going into the game assessing the game because as the analyst you would have been put on the spot to say who you thought would have won and so on we know that Craig Butler Mona's coach attended Jamaica College and actually played Manning Cup for Jamaica College so there was some emotion for him um, against JC obviously he's he's invested in Mona now so mm -hmm. there's no question of him feeling any sympathy for mm -hmm. Jamaica College but was that a part of the dynamism that you picked up in the match? Yeah it was because I, I spoke to him before the game as well he was yeah. mentioning that he definitely wanted to win this game more than any other because he wants to get a one-up over his old school but um, he's just general and emotional person heart on his sleeve at all times so he wants to win every match equally I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah now a quick comment on the I don't even know how to start because I don't want the KC people to jump on me. But Stats was able to <laughs> overcome KC and from my time being here I've always said, you know, KC are known as the winners and even if they don't win, they're winners. So talk to me about that result. Um, I think first of all, I know a lot of props have to be given to St. Andrew Technical because they're extremely brave. Um, I personally think they're the better team generally if you look than at... Than KC? Um, if you look at their starting level and their squad generally, I think player for player they are a better team. Kings and College obviously have quality players, you know, obviously Dijan Richards who I think is the best player in the competition generally. Yes. And of course players like Shakes in the midfield. They have Bayam, their centre back, I think is a good player as well. But with that being said, I think if you look at just the how stats use their players, how they their four three three set up and then their two interior midfielders push up to create that front five, all of those five players are lovely. It's not only Satchwell who was excellent last night of course but I think St. Andrew Technical were well worth winning last night. Yeah, and you say that, and my question to you is, what set them apart from Casey last night? What quality they demonstrated last night that caused them to emerge as champions in that particular match? Well, if you look at how Casey, Casey have lost one game, one game so far this season, and how that happened was by a team being very direct, and that's the St. George's defeat, and it's just being very direct and being very intentional with what you want to do. So Andrew Technical know the type of players they have. They're very, they have a lot of touch to them. They're very quick. They obviously can strike the ball extremely well. So they just try to play on their strengths as opposed to try and allowing KC to play to theirs, which is through their mm -hmm. talisman. Yeah, post-match we saw a lot of emotion coming from Satchwell because Omari Leng, one of his teammates from last season, had been killed. And uh, it... it, it was a very emotional moment for him. I don't think he completed the interview because he, he sort of broke down in, in tears. Talk to us about that aspect of the emotional triumph for St. Andrew Technical who would probably have dedicated yesterday's result, albeit the tournament not yet finished, but their, their passion and their desire to succeed this year could it be fueled a lot by having lost one of their teammates. Of course, you know, they, every game they mention it. After every game, all their players, their coaches, um, they just want to do it for him, you know. He was a part of their team, he was their top scorer, the top scorer in all of Manning Cup last season, so he was obviously a very pivotal and important part of their team. They clearly love him dearly, so it's always going to spur them on in hard times. You saw them go down to 10 men last night, and at no point did it look like it was 10 versus 11 because they still kept on fighting, still kept on pushing, so that's what I'm sure they he would have wanted him to do so. Yeah, and of course, the deceased on. player's brother is still in the St. Andrew yeah. technical setup and came on as a sub last night yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Leger, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And of course, we'll talk again when yeah. these matches continue to light up the channels of Sportsmax. Yeah, definitely.
The Jay Williams there, he was our analyst on the football matches that took place last night. We'll be right back after this quick break.